Hi YouTube, it's Lena and I am here today with empties with only one month of them. Be proud of me. <laughs> I've been kind of lazy about filming them this year and they ended up piling up two months at a time which is a lot of stuff to talk about so hopefully I can get this in in under 30 minutes if I don't talk too much. Anyways, if you're tuning in for the first time, like I always say, I do my makeup first, then full travel sizes of skincare, hair care, and whatnot. And then at the end, I save any foil samples I happen to have in my sheet masks because I know not everybody's into watching that and I figure I'll leave it at the end. If I was a good YouTuber, I would make you wait until makeup is last, but I hate that. So I don't do that to you guys. Hmm. So, first we have a makeup because I do kind of section my stuff off in here. Uh, I finally finished this. <laughs> it took me way longer than I expected. It really did. I don't wear as much makeup as I used to because I used to be able to go through one of these in about three to four months and this one took me six. So, which, well, between like five and six. Five solid months. Yeah, this took a while. So, it's Urban Decay All Nighter. It is my favorite setting spray for making everything stay matte and last throughout the day. It is expensive. This is actually from a two-pack that I bought a few years ago uh, during the holidays because they do a two-pack every year for, I think it's like 42 although this year, let's be honest, it'll probably be higher. Inflation is hitting everything. <laughs> Sad fact of life. But um, I'm always on the lookout for some kind of drugstore dupe that does as well as this and I've never found one that has done quite as well as this. I have found some that are what I would consider basically almost as good, good enough as far as saving a bunch of money. I always go through those faster though because this has four ounces and most stuff at the drugstore only has two to three. So keep that in mind. if when they inevitably change the packaging again, if you can get these for like half off, two thirds off even if you happen to catch it, that's when I usually will stock up. But I did treat myself one year to the two pack. And I'd say this is probably like two years ago. And I still have the other. It still works fine. Another big empty for me was the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation. This was in my Beauty A to Z Project Pan. Um, I actually really love this foundation. It's one of my favorites. I would absolutely buy it again if I didn't have like 15 foundations to go through. It has a 40, it started with a 40 shade range that was actually like a solid range of shades. I'll actually insert a picture over here if I could still find one because I don't know if, they've ex if they might have expanded the shade range since this first came out. I don't know what. Uh, it's got could it's got solid medium coverage. I wouldn't quite call it full. Of course, when I say that, I compare everything to full coverage of the Estee Lauder Double Wear because I have used that up and that sucker is a mask. So, well, I have used that up in the past. It was a couple years ago now. So this is like medium. You can probably build this to full. It says full coverage, but when you're comparing it to Estee Lauder, nothing is full coverage. So, I can actually find a shade that works for me. Mine is in one CSWSF01.5 Fair. To reach you the full thing on the back. And it does keep me matte. If you are, if you're looking for something with, you know, light coverage, this is not it. If you are looking for something that's more dewy, this is not it. Although you can make, it's much easier to make foundations dewy than it is to make them more matte. So just, you could probably add like some oil or a, a lot of like a liquid highlighter to this and get yourself a more glowy foundation but you probably just would rather buy a different foundation <laughs> this is like 16 dollars which sucks but you know you can buy it at walmart because walmart carries next so you can get a couple dollars off there you can wait till somewhere like ulta is either having a buy one get one off half or free for nyx or you can wait till nyx does a sale nyx does like their website does sales like twice a year so, not hard to get that. Uh, they're owned by L'Oreal, so parent company and whatnot, but that is straight up one of my favorite foundations. If I did like a top five, that would be in it. Oh, I'm reaching into the wrong thing. Speaking of stuff I absolutely love, although this one is missing its cap, <laughs> this is the Tarte Lip Quench. This is in a holiday shade called Holly. 
It was in one of those like Christmas two sets, which is usually when I buy these because, well, it's $19 for a, you know, lip balm, a tinted lip balm, but a lip balm. So I usually wait, get them for like, get them as part of a kit or something like that. But they are my favorite lip balm. They are minty. I know not everybody likes mint, so fair warning there. But that that is also one of my top five favorites of that category. <sighs> I wish they were cheaper. <laughs> I suck it up and usually wait until like a kit or something like that. I do have one that I bought in a holiday kit last year. Like it was a tart lip kit that had a full size of that and a couple of other things. Like it had a, one of their H2O lip glosses. It had some kind of lip crayon. I don't think it had a lipstick. I think it was just those three. Anyways, this is the Tatcha, the liquid silk canvas primer. I used it as a pore filler and it does work nicely for that. Of course, the one in the pot does too. The smell is so intense on their, especially their makeup products. Like I haven't tried their powder because I know they have one now, but like their makeup, like primers, the smell is so intense on them that it kind of makes me nauseous. Like it's not necessarily a bad smell. It's just super strong. It's like some kind of, I would say kind of perfumey scent. And I don't really, get it i don't get hit in the face with it so much from their skincare so i don't know what the difference is so i would not repurchase i do like their you know putty primer but the elf one is exactly the freaking same so just buy that this is the beauty crop cocoa gold mist unless you want little gold glitter in your setting spray hydrating setting spray i should add uh, don't buy this. It is like, you know, 10 or $15. I don't remember which. So it is inexpensive, but literal gold glitter. I actually had to dump it out and clean it out. And that was the only way I was going to be able to use it. Because when I saw it online, I thought that the gold was part of like the packaging. Like the Anastasia Dewy Skin Mist is. The gold, the gold glitter you see on it is the packaging. It's not in the thing. That was not the case for that. That had literal gold glitter. So no, would not get again. Uh, this is the First Aid Beauty uh, Pores Be Gone Matte Primer with Fig Extract. I wish I could repurchase this. They sell in China, but it is a really good primer if you're looking for something matte and pore filling. Mascara, this is the Bobbi Brown Smoky Eye Mascara. It was actually a pretty solid mascara, but Bobbi Brown, test on animals, would not be purchasing. I'm trying to get through the last couple of non cruelty free mascaras that I have because I had a such a backup of mascaras. This is the Marc Jacobs Highliner. This has dried out a lot since I purchased it, which is the case with these. Like, if you still have one of these, and they're out of business now. So, like, the makeup side of Marc Jacobs is out of business now. So, if you still have one of these, unless you just want to deal with a dry ass liner, just throw it out. I'm throwing out my brown one, or I probably already threw it out. I don't recommend trying to get through it because it's not worth it. I did finish this. This made me happy. This is the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. Um, I don't like this under makeup. I ended up using this for like no makeup days just to kind of get it used up, which is what I do with primers that are either a little too glowy to go under foundation for me. Like my, fa my face is very oily. It eats most things. So I can get away with hydrating primers, but not right now too hot in the summer, literally 100 degrees today where I live. Uh, but outside of like hot, hot ass spring and summer, I can get away with hydrated primers and some illuminating primers, especially if I'm wearing a matte foundation like the NYX. Uh, but there are some that even in the dead of winter, my face will still eat them. This is one of them. So I ended up just having to use it up as like a no makeup day type primer to kind of make my skin look a little bit better, which it did and it did smell really good it's also kind of sticky like not in the milk makeup hydro grip primer sticky but in the this is unpleasant please get this off my face too sticky sticky would not recommend this is the wet n wild primer serum i use this more as a serum because once again this does absolutely nothing for my skin as far as keeping makeup on but it's used up it's gone that's what matters and final piece of makeup is the e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. Mine was a little dry because it was my oldest brow pencil, but 
especially if I got especially if I used it when I initially got it like used it up all the way because I'm trying to knock out all my brow pencils so that I can use up a brow pomade eventually which I'm not going to enjoy but I have it so I'll learn I will learn how to use it properly and deal with it or I'll chuck it and probably go buy either this or the NYX micro brow again I find them fairly similar but I would just buy what I can get on sale the NYX is a little bit more expensive than the ELF, if I remember correctly, but I use them up at about the same rate. Which micro pencils, you do go through faster. I do have one perfume, little sprayer. This is the Estee Lauder Beautiful Magnolia. I wish I could get this because I really enjoyed it, but Estee Lauder, not really free. Sells in China. This is the Dr. Teal's Pure Epsom Salt, Eucalyptus and Spearmint. I go through multiples of these a year. I love it. I will always repurchase. I had the Bolero Soothing Facial Toner in Cucumber and Aloe for $1.25. If you want just like a fairly basic hydrating toner, this is great. You go through it a little on the fast side because it's only like two ounces, I think. Not two ounces. Four ounces. Four ounces. So a little more than I thought, but... For $1.25, just friggin' stock up on them. Get those at the Dollar Tree. Here's the Clean Skin Club Pineapple Glow Mist. Uh, it's a f this does have a really nice sprayer, like really like a nice fine mist. It does not smell like pineapple, so that already made me mad at it. I know I'm silly, but it's true. Uh, Clean Skin Club is a little bit on the expensive side, and you can really only get them online, so. This, I did not absolutely love enough to go through the effort of getting it again online, so would not repurchase. This is discontinued, but I would I would highly unrecommend it anyway. The St. Ives Cleansing Stick with Cactus Water and Hibiscus. For something that's supposed to hydrate you, this dried out my skin. Do you know how hard it is to dry out my skin? It is nigh impossible, but this did it. Now, it literally is like a cleansing... Ooh, if I can get it undone stick like you roll it up it's a stick it looks like a stick of deodorant feels kind of gross rubbing it on your skin like not in the unhygienic way which it is a little unhygienic but if it's only you using it that's not a huge deal necessarily it feels gross like it feels gooey or something i can't quite put my finger on it but it never felt nice putting it on my skin anyway i use this up to wash my brushes and it worked fine enough for that. It worked fine enough for that so I could use it up and get rid of it, but mm -mm. would not recommend seeking that out even though it's now discontinued and it would be a pain in the butt to get anyway. Another facial mist. I do love my facial mist. I fell in love with facial mist last year because I am a walking, talking, boiling bag of heat. So keeping one of these on me, just spraying myself down whenever I get overheated is great. This is the Bloom Effects Tulip Dew Mist. It is a hydrating mist. It does have like an aerosol spray, so it's like a wonderfully fine mist. For being fragrance free, this thing smells funny. Like I can't place my finger on what the smell is, but it smells funny. Also, I thought initially this was like $14. No, this is like 34 bucks for 2.8 ounces not enough bang for your buck. Even the pineapple, even the clean skin club comes with 3.4. Now stuff like that comes in bo like subscription boxes. When I buy one, I usually buy like the one from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> because it's a dollar 25, even if it's small, I can just buy like 12 of them at a time and be set for over a year. Here's another of the Briogeo Scalp Revival Charcoal and Tea Tree Scalp Treatments. I love these. I absolutely swear by them. They make my scalp feel less itchy constantly. Because for having oily hair, I have like an irritated scalp issue or something. Like it, it gets itchy after like a day. I don't know why. I am trying some less expensive ones because Garnier makes one where it costs less and it comes with a whole lot more product. So while I absolutely love this, and if the Garnier one does not work for me, I will go back to this. $6.97 versus $32. <laughs> I 
I'm sure you can imagine which one I'd rather repurchase. Let's see, this is the BASD Invigorating Body Lotion in Mint. I actually really enjoyed this, mostly for the mint, honestly. The lotion itself was fine, fairly basic, but you know, mint felt all nice and cooling. I'm boiling hot right now, of course I enjoyed this. I used up a full eye cream. That doesn't happen very too often in a year. Although I had a lot of work on this before. I just used it up as far as like, this was in my graveyard project pan, so spoiler. But uh, this is the e.l.f. Illuminating Eye Cream. If you are not super dry, I don't know how well this would necessarily work for like super dry skin. I'm only around my eyelids, which I've never heard of anybody else having that issue. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm just like, I'm so oily that I'm oily around my eyes. So, while I do want something good and hydrating, I can't necessarily go for like those super thick balmy ones, especially if I'm trying to wear makeup that day. For being 10 bucks, this works great for me. Now, I can't speak to how much like anti-aging benefits you're getting out of this. When I'm 36, I should probably be looking more into that, but especially if you're a little bit younger and you just want some decent hydration from the drugstore from a cruelty-free brand, this is great. Give it a check. Here's something you can't get anymore, but I'm glad to be done with it. It is the Ulta Deep Treatment Foaming Mask. This is like, especially when you're rinsing it off, weirdly a little foamy, but it was fine as far as like a clay mask is concerned. It smelled a little odd, but not in like a going bad odd, just in a kind of earthy way so glad to be done with it can't get it anymore oh you was the devil uh this is the bioclarity ba barefaced exfoliating enzyme jelly cleanser i'm 98 percent used this to clean my makeup sponge and it was fine that's what i do with these little mini cleansers that i don't really think much about but i did use it on my face one day and i immediately started turning bright red Something in this does not get along with my skin, and I don't know what it is. Like, it advertises Floralux, Pineapple and Papaya, and Squalane. It must be the Floralux, because everything else I've used in other stuff before, and it didn't do that to me. And using this on my makeup sponge didn't do anything to my skin. But actually applying this directly to my face, like, it was an immediate reaction. Like, red blotchiness everywhere that it touched. So like I had to go in super with the hydrating masks that night. I used both a sheet mask and an overnight like sleeping mask. Which I don't usually like to do both of them at the same time because that's a bit heavy for my skin. But uh, that, that night I did it and I was fine the next day. But uh, I would never touch this again. I would literally throw this in the garbage if it came my way again. <laughs> Let's see if I can quite remember. The Round Lab 1025 Docto Ampule. All of this is in Korean, that's why I'm having to remember it off the top of my head. It's a nice, like, moisturizing step. I like to have ampules slash essences in my skincare. It's a Korean beauty thing. It's just something, they're technically two different things, but I use, I use them interchangeably in the same, like, after toner, before serums step. Just a nice boost of moisture without being heavy. So, if you're really dry, maybe add something like an essence or an ampule to your skincare routine and it might help. And this was like $25 though, which I went through it in about two months. So I probably wouldn't seek this out again. My favorite is the, is the essences from COSRX because they're a little bit more thick. I think I get a little more moisture out of them without them, you know, being heavy. And they're huge. So you get a lot of product and it's got great packaging. It's just a nice pump. You don't have to worry about spilling it everywhere. And they're cruelty free, they don't sell in China, which in Korean beauty especially, you really have to check for because while in South Korea, it's against the law to test on animals, if you sell in China, they're gonna do aftermarket testing. So that's why China is a big deal as far as selling, as far as purchasing cruelty free items, in case you didn't know. But especially with Korea beauty, because Korea is right by China, obviously they're gonna sell a lot of stuff there you really have to check for that, but it's usually pretty easy to find out. You just have to be willing to Google it. But COSRX is a known brand that does not sell in China. That And that's the one that I usually purchase, but I got this from 0.8 liter to test and give a review on. 
and I finally used it up. Here's the Elizabeth Mott Vitamin C Face Scrub. It is a warming scrub, but if that doesn't bother you, this was actually really nice. I would actually like to repurchase it at some point. Elizabeth Mott, you can get on Amazon pretty easily. They're fairly inexpensive, so once I use up all my face scrubs, I might very well go back and repurchase this. And finally, before sheet masks, I have, speaking of Tatcha, this is the Tatcha Water Cream. Yeah, the, even just smelling it straight out the pot, this is not as intense as the makeup they, they, that they sell. I don't get it. I thought this was the lighter one. Like, they also have, like, the dewy cream and stuff like that. But for still being, like, the lighter of the moisturizers, I still had to use this at night. Like, this, this was still a little too heavy for my face during the day. Which, I mean, that's a me issue, not a problem with this cream, but... If I've spent this kind of money on something, I'd want to be able to use it night and day. Like, that's my one kind of caveat with possibly purchasing this in the future, because I do believe when I'm actually purchasing stuff and not just getting stuff through, you know, subscription boxes, because I have way more moisturizer than I can ever know what to do with, so I don't need to be spending, especially this price, on a new one. Um, if I was to buy my own and use it and purchase it, I would want to be able to use it day and night if I'm spending like, you know, 70 bucks on a moisturizer. So that would be my one kind of issue with it. Now, sheet masks. Let's see. Oh, this was a dookie one. <laughs> Pulling out a fun one to talk about right here. This is the Maskology Hyaluronic Gummy Modeling Mask. You actually like, let me pull out the bits because I did save the other parts. It came with these two steps. And actually like a little fold out cardboard tray to mix them in. You have the gel and the powder, you mix them together, you spread it out all over your face, and it kind of solidifies into basically a peel off gel mask, but not like rip off, like gently remove <laughs> afterwards. But uh, yeah, this was gross looking because it didn't solidify into just like, one smooth sheet like it shows, you know, on the packaging. No, this was like the consistency of snot. I will insert the grossest picture ever right here for you if I can find it because I took a picture of it. Uh, this was not cute. <laughs> and to be perfectly honest, I don't think the results were worth it. <laughs> This, this shit got everywhere too, like trying to get it on my face. It would like drip, try to drip off and everything. And I have another one of these <laughs> that I need to use up at some point. Uh, this was kind of gross. I did not enjoy it. I don't like to just throw stuff in the garbage, but I don't know who else would want that. So I think I'm just going to force myself to use it up. I used the last of my Duft and Doff Pink Milk Masks. If you were on the drier side, I think this would be better for you because this was thoroughly loaded with essence. Let's see. Purely Green Tea and Ginger Rejuvenating Mask. Definitely smells like ginger, like kind of potently. But if you don't mind that, it's a fine hydrating mask. This I did not enjoy, unfortunately. It's Pacifica Super Green Detox Kale and Charcoal Facial Mask. Uh, it didn't quite fit. Like it was a little on the narrow side and it had like heart shapes for eyes, which is kind of cute, but it's kind of hard to see through. And it wasn't very saturated at all. It was kind of on the dry side. Like not so dry that I couldn't use it, but definitely it needed more essence to it. So I would not get that again. Here is the Pharmacy Hydrating Coconut Gel Sheet Mask. Like, the, the Maskology one's supposed to be a gel, like a solid gel, like something like this is, and it was not. This is nice, been on the expensive side because it's pharmacy, but, you know, I was happy to use it because it came with a pharmacy AIA beauty box, so. Probably not something I would purchase, but definitely something I always enjoy when I have it. A Glam Up Refreshing Peppermint Sheet Mask. I like these. I know not everybody really likes a lot of peppermint in their skincare or anything minty or menthol-y. I like it. Makes me feel refreshed. It is literally called skin purifying, so 
If your skin is sensitive, I probably wouldn't use anything like that, but if it's not, I think you'll be fine. Here is a in Nature Sika Herb Restore Sheet Mask. This was nice. It is for soothing and softening. I think it did a good job of that. Here is my last Hello Organic Sheet Mask, sadly. This is the grain one for pore refining. My favorite is still the fruit, because it smells the best, honestly. I think they all do similar eye things, even though one says pore refining, one says hydrating, blah, 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 blah. I think they all do fairly basic as far as like moisturizing and whatnot is concerned. This was still fine. I would use it again if I got it, but the one that I would purchase is the fruit. To actually have a couple of foil samples in here. That's rare. Okay, so we have four of the Wander Beauty Baggage Claim Gold Eye Masks. These are some of my absolute favorite eye under eye masks. Primarily because not only do they kind of take away the puffiness, at least, you know, temporarily for the day, uh, they actually stay in place because a lot of these things, like these eye masks, they tend to slide down your face to varying degrees of quickness. You can literally do freaking backflips in this and they won't move. Love it. I have the L'Oreal Pure Clay Mask for Detox and Brighten. I still really like this mask, even though I can't get it anymore because, you know, L'Oreal sells in China. but. I had this old sample and it was still good, so I used it. I still really like it. And the K Bella Skin Brightening Papaya Peel Off Mask. If you like peel off masks, I guess this was fine. I'm trying to get away from those, but I'm trying to also use up what I have. And finally, the Beauty Bl Blender Cleanser in the liquid form. It does work great. I think you can get the same results from the uh, Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap, honestly. So that is it. Uh, if you would like to see a list of everything that I used up, I will link the spreadsheet that I used down below. It's just like a Google, Google Sheets thing where I list, you know, the full name, whether it's cruelty free or not, what Project Pan it's in, uh, prices, although, you know, like, Stuff like this, obviously, has to be kind of calculated, so. Uh, but yeah, that is it. Stay tuned if you want to see, if you want to see numbers compared to like how much I've used throughout the year, because I always do a little visual thing at the end, so that is it. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I do really appreciate it, and hopefully I will see you later. Bye!